Okay, this is Aaron with uh, Eric Dollard uh, here at the shop in Spokane. Today is uh, Monday, April 12th, 2021. And what we're doing here is uh, you can see that the uh, potential coils pointing out have been completely removed. And so the resonant frequency has uh, gone up quite a bit because um, those are not there to drag it down. So we're up to uh, 7.8 megahertz and it's a uh, 7.817 megahertz or 7812 kilocycle and what we have is uh, the Collins which we're using for the little uh, flame speaker and the output of that is hooked to that tube and we have a um, field strength meter uh, right next to it and uh, the objective here well first of all the Collins unit is tuned to the same frequency as this, or at least as close as we can approximate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the um, this camera over to this field strength meter so you can see what it's doing. Let's get the camera locked into place here. So if I bring it up, let's see. Closer there. Okay, lock that into place here. Okay, and do you want to explain what the meter is doing? Okay, this is the beat frequency, so the whole idea is to find out where on the transmitter that it's going to be the same frequency as these coils, so it looks like we're lucky. Right now we've got it almost down to zero beat. So are these interfering with each other? Yeah, well the the field strength meter is getting half the it's getting half the Tesla coil. Uh -huh. And then we turn that off, but I'm not gonna bother. But at any rate the transmitter provides the other half. Okay. So when I did that, of course, that changed the frequency. So now what I'm gonna do is find the frequency by tuning until the meter kicks. And that's the difference frequency is the speed that the pointer is moving. So right now the transmitter is tuned to exactly what the oscillator is putting out, other than its drift. Because this pulse of about three beats per second or something. We want to get it down different. to a, a, like a zero beat. But yeah, it's close enough. Uh -huh. So that's like this oscillator is not quite to that precision. You can't do this with digital. You've got to have analog in order to get so you can move it right down to the lowest there to the, almost right on frequency. But as you can see, the oscillator is drifting a little. So you're talking about just a couple cycle per second difference. Yeah, is how close right. it's tuned. Yeah, out of out of millions of cycles a second. That's right. one thing about Collins is their oscillators are really tight. Uh -huh. And they're continuous, none of this digit step stuff, which you couldn't possibly get a zero beat with digit step. So that means now that the columns can be hooked to the coil, so that's what we'll do next. We found the frequency. So now we take the column leads off the light bulb and put them on the input transformer. Okay. Take the oscillator away. Okay, so Eric just disconnected the uh, BNK uh, digital uh, signal generator, and the Collins that we had verified is at the same frequency as the resonant frequency of the two current coils, and we have this little uh, 12 inch long or so um, fluorescent light lighting up in free space about a eh, good distance and how many how many uh, that's a hundred watts going into that now no I got to turn way down okay way so down it's going to be quite an ordeal to get this tuned up but I just want to at least show it getting started but in the other videos you know that that's little signal generator that we were using we were able to get that lit up with the whole setup um, about 14 inches away at the most and so this is pretty it looks almost right now, effortless power, you know it's only like about 10 watts about 10 watts and we're so the thing is to get that power into the and we're at about 7.8 mega cycle something like that yeah actually i haven't really tried tuning it 
but that's where you know that allows it to get brighter. So of course where the lamp is changes the frequency. So there's a lot of optimizing to go on here. power would you estimate where it's at? Well right now this lamp's running at, at its basically its 15 watt level. Yeah, well it's definitely as bright as it's going to get. Yeah. Camera might not do it justice but what I'm seeing right here is that thing is really bright. Yeah. Okay, well that's where we're at for now. Will I give a neutral spot between those? This side seems to be a little should. I, I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of difficult with this lamp. Let me let me disconnect the neutral. It seems to be a little bit of imbalance going on here. I'll just let the video run. Okay, it's still, this thing's still accepting more power. We're only at the transmitter is only putting out a little more than 15% of its capacity, so. So 15 watts. Yeah, about. So as Eric is moving the bulb away, it's going to decrease the capacitance dragging down the coil so the frequency yes, will go if up, I get right? Closer than. There's an optimum spot between tuning, uh -huh. loading, put it, lugging down, and then tuning this up. That's pretty good. The light's taking its power in space, and the transmitter is pretty much some more fine tuning to do here to get the. You may turn the main light off to. No, I'm up for this. I mean, it's bright enough. I think this is good enough for now. Okay. So what's your conclusion? Works. <laughs> Just have to see how it's going to work. What's the maximum? Uh, how high can we get the voltage? Can we get a flame off of it? Uh huh. And so what's so what's the next steps from here with this experiment? Just to see if I can get a a flaming you know a one pole discharge. And that's right off the current coils. Yeah, I, I don't think it will, but. It'll, it'll be right on the edge, so I want to see. I got to put a little, stick a little something in here. We might have to make a terminal on here. I don't know. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll figure that out when we get to it. So basically, it's just turning the power up on the Collins and drawing an arc. Is it as simple well, as have, that? I have to get this thing matched to this. Okay. The transformer ratio might not be mm -hmm. right. I mean, there's this kind of. So I'm okay. not going to fool with it that much. Yeah. I'm just going to see what it will do and then take these off and then put the potential coils on and find out what their frequency is and uh -huh. if Repeat. it falls in the range of this and also that tuning unit we built okay is uh, that was made to drive the potential coils possibly 
Uh -huh. These are all experiments that need to be done to see what frequencies these arrangements are going to resonate on and how to best get, get them coupled to the transmitter.